Hey, before we get into it, I am in London right now doing my UK tour and I want you to come. I am in London, August uh, 13 and 14. The 14th has sold out. The 13th uh, is almost full. Get tickets to that. Then we've got uh, Bristol on the 15th, Birmingham on the 16th, Manchester on the 22nd. That sold out. We added an extra show on the 22nd at 9 p.m. I think that's half full. Then we've got Liverpool Friday the 23rd, Leeds on the 24th, Newcastle on the 27th. Then we go to Scotland. We've got Glasgow on the 28th. Then we go to Ireland. We've got Belfast on the 30th and Dublin on the 31st. And then we're done. Loosebeers.com. Get your tickets. I really, really, really want to see you there. It's my first time in your beautiful countries on that continent. Uh, I'm so excited to do it. I'm so excited to meet you afterwards. Please, please, please come. It's going to be awesome. The show is great, and I'm so excited to be doing them and happy to be in your country. Loosebeers.com. I'll see you there. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 348 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Uh, I am very happy to say, finally happy to announce, that I am a reality TV star. That's right. I'm a reality TV star. Didn't I say it was going to be over for you when I got my new chin? Within a month of me getting my new chin, I'm on F-Boy Island, baby. That's right. Okay? I'm the first... <laughs> I'm the first guy ever to get on reality TV on a dating show with braces. Now, I can't talk much about the show uh, because none of it's aired yet. I haven't even seen it. I don't know how it's going to be edited. I don't know how much of me and what's happened is going to make it on air. So I'll be watching it live with you guys, but it's not a joke. I am actually on FBoy Island. If you don't believe me, check out their Instagram. They've posted it, posted it. I've gotten so many messages being like, oh yeah, nice, nice troll dude. You tricked me into thinking that I'm on FBoy Island, which I think is my fault because the last time uh, this happened, I posted that I was going to be on the project. <laughs> And I did a Photoshop thing and that got 10,000 likes and a few messages from family members going, congratulations, Lewis. You know, <laughs> make sure you, make sure you, whatever Waleed Ali says, you disagree, you know, <laughs> from, from a few of those from that side of the family. Everyone has that side. <laughs> but this time it's real. It's happening. It's reality. It's reality TV. And as we all know, everything that happens on reality TV is real and true. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say because I haven't, I haven't seen it and uh, I can't talk too much about it. But let's, let's see what happens. I told you I was cooking something up, didn't I? <laughs> it's very exciting. Um, dude, I'm, I'm going to England. I'm in England right now, actually. Or at least I'm in the... I'm, I'm, in the Sultanate of Brunei. Maybe I'm being detained right now. Do you think? I, I'm going to London via Brunei, which is a country I found out existed when I was, uh, when I was signing my entry form. And the first thing that I said was uh, the, the kingdom of Brunei, uh, drug traffickers get the death penalty in red text. So hopefully they don't find anything in my boogie board bag, you know? Did you know that was a place? I'd heard of it. I didn't. I thought it must have been near Saudi Arabia. It's in, in near Indonesia or in Indonesia. Ah, oh, interesting. Yeah, I'd, I hadn't heard of it, but I'm I'm excited to pass through there on my way to London, dude. I need to stop. I need to stop flying middle row economy. <laughs> I went to Brisbane to open for Ryan Long, middle row. Went back, middle row, and my body is not built for that. Like, I have a business class body with a middle row economy's wallet. It's not good. <laughs> and I refuse to pay extra for exit row on principle. I'm a, if I'm in the exit row, I'm providing a service to everyone else. It should not be the person that pays money to be a hero. It's the, you know, you don't pay to be a hero you rise up to the challenge, and that's what should be happening. You don't want some 60-year-old woman who has an extra $70 in the exit row. You want me. I also don't think it's even worth paying for it because it's more uncomfortable in many ways. You it's can... only worth paying for if you're me, if you're my height. 
That's it. It's great to put your legs out, but then you don't have anywhere to kind of kind of to lean on. To you sleep. like cuddling your fellow passengers. <laughs> I, like, I like to lean forward and, and sleep. Yeah, li- rest your head on, yeah. on on someone else's backrest and just bashing your huge head on their spine. That's more your vibe. Yeah. Yeah, I want to be as far away from fucking everyone as possible. Dude, sometimes I sit in the exit row next to someone who might be able to open the emergency exit but certainly would not fit out. They're that fucking fat. And I'm just thinking that person needs to sit up the back of the plane because although if if someone, if the emergency exit did fail, they would wedge into the door and become the new emergency exit and prevent the cabin from depressurizing. So in some situations, you do want a giant fatty in the exit row. You know, when I was coming home, uh, it's I got up at 5 a.m. right before I recorded this podcast. So if the podcast is off, I got up at 5 a.m. and I'm in the airport at like 6 a.m. and I'm about to board my flight last, as always, because I don't line up. And as right before I'm about to get on the plane, one guy goes, hey! and then I fucking shit my pants. A woman screams. And then eight dudes start doing the haka <laughs> because I guess a, a, a family member was leaving Brisbane or whatever. So there were eight giant Maori guys all doing the haka in the airport and it scared the fuck out of me. It terrified me. Watching them do the haka was cool, but does it have to start with, ah, we're in an airport, brother. I love your beautiful cultural practice and your incredibly soulful performance of what is something super important to your culture. But does it have to start with, ah, in a, like we're in an airport, you know? Like, why couldn't it start with, hey guys, just so you know, we're going to do the haka. And that involves a lot of yelling. And then you start screaming, you know? It scared the fuck out of everyone. I reckon a third of the airport thought there was a terrorist attack. <laughs> and then we're like, oh, thank God, it's just the hucker. <laughs> it scared this shit out of me. You know? The only thing that I can imagine being scarier in an airport is like some guy in a suit going, remember, no Russian. Oh, no. I love... I love cultural practices but please don't yell in the airport (laughs) i thought i I was not going to make it back home to melbourne (laughs) when people get in a semicircle and then one guy in the middle is like all right you're like fuck this looks a little too organized (laughs) but then you see half of them have like face tattoos and you're like oh they're this way they're just gonna do the haka but goddamn scared the shit out of me Kamala Harris is going to be president. Are you are you ready for this, Keelan? I'm president voting President Kamala. It. Yeah. You're voting? I Do you reckon she wins? I, think- I don't think so. I don't know. I think that Trump was absolutely 100% going to beat Biden, and I think that he's actually very shitty that Biden retired. I think that's actually a really big problem for Trump because if Biden was running, definitely Trump wins. Now that it's Kamala, I think it's definitely closer. I think that the only thing that makes me unsure about whether Kamala will win is I don't know. I don't know if America elects a woman. Yeah, that's it. I don't know if America has it in him. A black woman as well. Yeah, because Obama, but he won. He won by a lot. Obama back in the day. Obama. It wasn't it, Obama. It wasn't close. But he has a penis. So, so even people that were like, oh, I don't know about a black guy. They were like, well, he is black, but he is a guy. So I can vote yeah. for that bloke. Whereas Kamala, I don't know. I think that's the only thing that's going to hold her back is, is I don't see America voting in a woman. I think a lot of people who wouldn't have voted for, for Trump or Biden would vote for Kamala. Yes. Yes. There's a, Cause I mean, it goes back to what I was saying, like, People would. People were only voting for Joe Biden because they hate Trump, and they're like, "Well, the alternative is worse." 
But there are quite a few people that would actually be like, you know what, I'm excited to vote for Kamala. Mm. No one would be excited to vote for Joe. A lot of people would be excited to vote for Kamala. But, yeah, maybe I don't know. It'll be interesting for sure. I do love, though, that she comes out and they swap him out and then they instantly start rolling out Kamala's campaign. And one of the first things they do is say that she's brat. I love that. Kamala Harris is brat. The album by Charlie XCX about sniffing coke from nightclub toilets. That's the next president of the United States does coke in nightclub bathrooms. <laughs> I always find it so funny whenever politicians try to align themselves with musicians because the only music that is popular in America is about shooting people, fucking people or sniffing coke. And we've got coke president. Coke President Kamala versus, uh, I mean, Republicans, who do they have seen? They've got Kid Rock. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> Apparently the RNC, they had that wrestler. What's his name? The blonde guy. Look it up. Ric Flair. Was it him? No, yeah. it wasn't him. Oh, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Hell the air, brother. <laughs> Vote for Trump. Build the wall, brother. Yeah. Kamala Harris is not Brat, brother. What really frustrates me about um, my lack of ability to do impressions is that I can fucking nail someone I would never really want to do an impression of. Like, I do a great Hulk Hogan, and, and, and that's it. Hell yeah, brother. That would be a great impression to do in the 80s, but it's now, and he's, he's half dead and performing at the RNC. <laughs> um... So, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Because she's still, I mean, is she nominated officially yet? Not yet. Nah, but she got endorsed by the Obamnas today. Yeah. And the, and the Obamnas uh, signed Joe Biden's death warrant too. <laughs> like that was, that was the final straw. When Obama pulled his support, everyone was like, all right, get grandpa out of here. <laughs> what? What's happening? <laughs> you know, you know they woke him up to let him know he's not the president anymore. <laughs> uh, who? What do you mean I'm not the president? Am I the president? <laughs> I'm the president. <coughs> and he just walks away. <laughs> Joe, what? Joe, you're not the president anymore. Of course, I'm not the president. Obama's the president. I'm the vice president, man. Hey. <laughs> Damn, that sucks. I think I just figured out my Joe Biden impression. <laughs> He's not the president anymore. Fuck, that would have been so funny six months ago. What happens if Kamala Harris wins with the inauguration? Does she, like, she already works at that place. So it's not works like... Works where? At, at the, the White, White House. House. Well, she just be she becomes the president. She just moves offices. And then she... She does coke in... She oh, builds a nightclub in the White House. Yeah. And and then she reveals the reason why it's called the White House is because <laughs> I sniff coke off the bathroom toilets here because I'm brat. And they paint it green. You're obviously not brat. Keelan doesn't understand any of these jokes. He's not fucking... I know it's brat summer. You wouldn't get it, man. It's a whole <laughs> lifestyle and I don't expect you to understand. <laughs> Okay, this guy's not brat. Um, dude, are you watching? The Olympics is so good. Yeah. The Olympics is so good this year if you skip all of the men's events. <laughs> Don't watch any of the men. It's boring. All of the male events suck across across the board. Have you been excited by a single male event at the Olympics? They suck. The women's is where it's at. Mm. Now, you know me. I've never been a big fan of slow motion sport. Ugh. But in this scenario, the women's competition, everything. The shooting's better. The swimming. The diving. The beach volleyball. A lot of them are wearing pants. I'm not happy about it. But it is better than the men's. <laughs> The, swim, the women's events are the only events where it seems like in every single event there's one freak 
that's that's just smashing everyone else, including their own teammates, and then the entire rest of the world is just fighting for second and third place. Mm. Swimming, Katie Ledecky was like 16 bodies ahead of the competition. She was so far ahead that when she finished the race, no one else was on screen. Simone Biles is killing it. And those are all the names of female sports stars I know. But that's pretty good because I don't know any of the men. Ariane Usain Timis. Bolt, and he's fat now. That's that's all I know. What have you been watching? Just only only the swimming. I watched a bit of the beach volleyball. I watched actually I watched a bit of it the other night. But because we're only watching the heats, it's not as interesting. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, I watched the beach volleyball and it just it made me laugh at how you know, like it's obviously it's the Olympics. And it's incredible that anyone's there at all. But it's so obvious, like, when listening to the commentators talk about it, like, some of the athletes, it's their job. And the rest of them are really, really great at what is a hobby. You know, like beach volleyball. The commentator goes, oh, the, the, the women's team for Australia are doing great considering they've only played about four games this year. <laughs> yeah. Like it's Flav- the, that's a hobby. Flavor for Flav, is it the guy's name? Had to sponsor the American water polo team. Right? Because everyone was working two or three jobs. Yeah. Like if you're making it to the Olympics and it's it's a hobby because there's so little money in it, that's incredible. And that brings me to my next point. The Olympians in Australia are not getting paid enough. Did you know that Australia will only pay 20 grand if you get a gold medal or 10 grand if you get a silver. But if you get like one gold, two silvers, you only get 20 grand. That's bullshit. But then they pay for your training the year after. It's an incentive. Who cares? No, they don't pay for your training. You only get that money, the 20 grand, a year after. No, they do. Your training is covered the following 12 months it is. Really? It's not a reward, it's an incentive. That's how they phrase it. Right. So they so then they don't get 20 grand. They get 20 grand towards training no, for a year. No, 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 no. They they get the 20 grand cash? Cash in their pocket. Right. And then 12 months of their training is paid for. Or it better be. Maybe not so much training but like what they need to train. It's still not enough. No, no, no. It's not enough. Like they would still need a job. If you only got 20 grand, because that's four years of work plus training from when you were eight years old. Yeah. Cam McAvoy used to work at a cafe while being one of the fastest people in the world. That is crazy. Okay. Here's the solution. This is how we make all the Olympians that win medals rich. Australia gets together and we have an official tip jar. (laughs) <laughs> and what we do is we just have a link and everyone contributes a couple bucks. And then that amount in the pot gets separated among gold, silver, and bronze medalists. Depending on how many medals you win or your team wins, it gets taken from the pot. And that would encourage people to watch because they go, oh, fuck, I put 10 bucks in. Let's see who wins it. That's how we make Olympians rich. Like Olympians should be driving supercars. Even if you're doing one of the fake sports like breakdancing, you should be rich. (laughs) I downloaded the 9Go app, which, by the way, made me want to shoot myself in the head. That app sucks. That's the worst fucking app I've ever used in my life. I down I download the uh, the app to watch the fucking Olympics, which by the way is the best app I've ever used in my life. And I see they've got breaking on there. I'm like, what the fuck is breaking? Some strange European sport, and it's just break dancing, which I'm not upset at that it's on the Olympics. But fuck, they're getting desperate when they add in a sport that isn't exactly real. You know they want more viewers. Because really, I mean, what are, what are people actually watching? Australia will watch the swimming. America will watch just the women's division of gymnastics. And the world will watch the sprinting. That's it. No one's watching anything else. 
Is there any other sport that's popular that makes <clears throat> enough people care that they'll actually go and turn on their TV and watch it? Instead of just like, oh, I'll find out in the news the next day who won the badminton. I watched handball the other day. I was like, what's handball? And then I opened up the best app in the world and read the description of it. And I thought that sounds like boring soccer <laughs> and didn't even try it. Yeah. Was it any good? It was so fucking fun to watch. Really? It's unbelievably cool. Okay. okay I'll cool have to watch right it. Word. Fun. All right. So it's like, you know what? You know what I thought? I think we both have the, we're both, we're both on the same page here. And that's why I didn't watch it. Like swimming. I was like, I love this sport. Then I read the description of handball and I was like, that sounds like a fun game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like handball's a game, right? Now, sprinting, that's a sport. Handball is something that I would play at like a nine-year-old's birthday. <clears throat> that's a game. And God bless that the incredible athletes that uh, losing the handball competition. That's one of those sports that would be like crazy popular in a country that you can't spell. <laughs> so uh, these Olympics headline, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games were benched by the Olympics in favor of NFTs and esports. Fuck. Hey, oh. Instead of working with an actual game and creating something that's actually tangible and real, why don't we just fucking invent a, a, a fucking bullshit NFT, a PNG tied to the blockchain so that we can scoop up $100 from idiots? That was definitely an idea that some fucking idiot 19-year-old with a Discord addiction came up with five years ago. And they just decided to implement it in time to say no to Nintendo. And by the time the Olympics rolls around, no one gives a fuck about NFTs anymore. Did they do NFTs? So or they did they just say no to Nintendo and then we're like, we're going to do NFTs and then NFTs died and then they're like, fuck. They released possibly the worst looking game on mobile phone, Olympics Go, Paris 2024. And you Olympics Go. Play. What do you catch? Chlamydia at Olympic Village? You just play all the sports and you can collect the uh -huh. Paris 2024 mascot NFT digital pins. Yeah, I'd rather get chlamydia. What, a digital pin on my... Is it, an, is it even an NFT? It says NFT, yeah. It's right. Ma Magic Eden, is that... Magic Eden, I don't know, that sounds like some scam crypto bullshit. Yeah. Can you trade them? I think, is it on the blockchain though? I'm not oh, you're asking a lot of questions. I'm not sure, but you can connect your wallet. Okay. So it must be, if you can connect your wallet, it must be an actual NFT. That's, I guess that's something, but it'd be fucking, there's no way they're making more money out of that than they would out of. Oh yeah. You can trade it. Yep. Okay. Can you please find out what they're selling for? I, I guarantee you it's cents. There's no way. NFTs are so dead right now. So unbelievably dead. Oh, I think I still have some of my NFTs. Remember, I made a stand-up clip into an NFT, or it was it a it was a real, real talk, talk and turned it into an NFT. Me talking shit about NFTs, I turned it into an NFT. And I was like, oh yeah, I might sell a hundred of these, and I think I sold seven. <laughs> I can't see. It doesn't look like anyone's actually selling them. Everyone's That's awesome. buying them but not selling. Okay. Yeah, that, they must be getting minted on the game then. Yeah. So they're worthless. If no one's selling them, they're just worthless. That's awesome. Great. Well, well done to the Olympic Committee there. They've they've uh, created nothing, which is what an NFT is. But they got rid of like the best game in the last two decades. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games was so much fun. Incredible game. Really good. And, and shouldn't have been good either. Yeah. Like when I first heard about it coming out, I was like, oh, this will suck. And it's incredible. What do you think of the Olympians on TikTok and Instagram Reels? I think that's the only way some of them can pay their rent, obviously. You know, mm. like that's that's the retirement plan for the best athlete in the world that's not a swimmer or a runner <laughs> is I hope I become famous. Yeah. Because every other sport 
is unpopular and you're going to lose to a Chinese person on steroids. That's the reality for every other athlete is you, you lose to a, like a Chinese woman with heaps of back hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then if you don't age out with 700,000 Instagram followers from doing TikTok dances in the Olympic village, you're fucked. And you go, and, and, and all you'll have to show for it is bad knees and a, and a tattoo of the rings somewhere prominent. So that when, you, so that when you're serving someone at a drive through someone can go, oh, were you in the Olympics? Yep. Yeah. Oh, what'd you, what was your sport? Handball. Oh, yeah. That'll be a large fries, thank you. <laughs> Hurry up with my order. I think it's very cool that there's a lot of athletes doing social media but it does make it a lot less um, unachievable because they're showing how normal and how real they are. Yeah. I'm, I'm not seeing them as like these gods doing sport. Which is what the Olympics should be about. Exactly. Like I, Usain Bolt, if I saw him do a TikTok, I wouldn't, like there's no fucking way I would care about him at all. Yeah. Because he doesn't really post, I'm like, that guy's cool. Yeah. Like Sam Flicker posting all those diving videos last Olympics yeah. makes me respect the sport a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you did a few flips. Yeah, I think that's the 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 mystique of someone doing something incredible like disappears a lot when you when when they're like, look at the cardboard I sleep on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you're a homeless guy with abs. <laughs> you know. Like I saw another guy, I don't even know what sport he plays, which probably says a lot, but he is going viral on TikTok because he's obsessed with the muffins at Olympic Village. And it's like that guy, like that that guy in Roman times would be, would be coming home to like 30 women and they would all be slaves. So that's probably not good. <laughs> but then someone would carve a statue of him. But now I don't even know what sport he's good at, but I see him as like the, the chocolate muffin guy. That's the most attention that he'll ever get in his life and it's not for his sport. It's because, oh, look at this guy. He's eating muffins at the Olympic Village. That's relatable. Social media just makes... Like there's so much that's really cool about, oh, you get to see the... It's so genuine and it's so much more authentic and then, and then... But sometimes you just want like someone to kind of be like cool but instead they have to be like Duh, don't worry guys i'm just like you mm. and it's like i don't want you to be just like me all right i don't want i don't want to see you eating chocolate muffins i want i want to see you putting a jacked japanese guy in a headlock and going for <laughs> that's australia baby you know some wrestling champ i I'm seeing all of the the triathlons starting. They're making all those those poor swimmers jump into the into the Seine, the Seine, or the horrifically dirty river. And all of these like very unathletic freaks on Twitter are cutting up like people swimming in a triathlon in the in the river and then cutting to them after the race vomiting. They're like, oh, look how dirty the river is. And I was like, dude, they're vomiting because they just did a triathlon. Like they're exhausted. That's that's that happens after every single marathon, bike ride, run, swim. They spew. Mm. <laughs> but I, if there's one sport that I can recommend, you got to watch the women's diving, because that is it. Like talk about fighting for third place. Women's diving is China wins first and second. And third place is so far behind second place that it, it's almost like they're not even in the Olympics. The Chinese divers are so fucking good. And I think like the, the number one dive, diver, like she won an Olympics when she was like 14 or 15. Could you imagine training your entire life? You're like 22 and then some 14-year-old Chinese girl comes and just demolishes you. Like that should only happen 
when you visit your little cousin and you play Fortnite together. <laughs> you know, like he demolishes you. And then you're like, oh, well, of course he beat me. This kid's 14. That's all he does is play Fortnite. I have a job and I pay tax. But imagine if you have a job and you pay tax, but you're also an Olympic level diver and you still lose to the 14 year old. And you're like, fuck, I got to go back to the cafe now. <laughs> you know, you're like, that's not fair. They're cheating. No, we, we tested them. They're not taking drugs. I'm not, I'm saying the child abuse that's cheating. You know, that's how you really make an athlete. You remove their soul and free will. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait for England. China suspect Aussie beef as source of steroids in positive test. Aussie beef. They're, they're blaming their steroid use on Australian beef. Oh, they ate an Australian steak. <laughs> and like, oh, there's bloody steroids in it. If that were true, wouldn't every single Australian athlete test positive? <laughs> Or like every Chinese person here would be walking around jacked with like fucking hair on their face. <laughs> That's a good ad. I reckon, I reckon the Australian beef industry should lean into that one, you know? Aussie beef. That'll put hair on a Chinese woman athlete's chest. <laughs> <clears throat> I opened for, for Ryan Long uh, this week. Great shows. He's a great comic. He's a great guy. I did a podcast with him that'll be out, uh, I don't know, maybe next week, maybe the one after. We'll see. Um, and he's Canadian, right? And in Melbourne, I also met Nima Naz, who's also Canadian, and then his brother. They're all Canadian. And we went out to Chinatown and we had food. And I had the weirdest conversation with these three Canadian men. I felt like I'd stepped into an alternate universe. Do you know what the conversation was? Fuck Kendrick. Drag one. And all three of them were like, man, fuck Kendrick. Drake trashed him. Kendrick's a fucking... Kendrick sucks, man. And like they're fully locked in. I'd never... I'd never seen that before. They were so adamant and convinced that Kendrick... Lost and Drake won. They were even talking about the New Ho King restaurant, about how they had gone there, the restaurant that Drake filmed at. It was wild. I've never heard that even on the internet from anyone. Canadians are very loyal people. You have to respect it. Just, just living in an alternate universe where Drake won the beef. Brother, the whole world, other than Canada, is singing songs about how Drake is a pedophile. I think he may have lost. <laughs> it's not look... At the very least, it's not looking good. You know how serious about it they were? I can't... I don't remember the names, but Ryan was like, oh, this other guy opened for me and we took a photo together and then he put it on his story with Kendrick's song, Not Like Us. I'm not sharing that shit. <laughs> really funny. So you got to love the Canadian loyalty there. Hilarious. Uh, dude, I go, to, I go to London in two days. I'm so excited. I'm not going to like the trip over there. It's a big, long trip, but I'm very excited to to get over there and do it. The first London show is sold out. The second one's like almost full. All the shows are selling much more than I thought they would, um, which is just so cool. I'm very grateful and I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity to do it and to see it. You know, what I realized the other day, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to see old things for the first time in my life. <laughs> mm. I've never seen anything old. We like as old as we go is like two hundred years, really. Yeah. yeah, it's we have a very young country. I was talking about this with a with a guy last night, and he goes, "Oh yeah, the last time I was in England, we were just walking around, and we stumbled across like a little small old graveyard, and I read read one of the gravestones, and it was the guy's name, and it said the year nine hundred something, a thousand years old." Mm. 
That's crazy. A thousand years. Old. I'm going to go. I, I've, I'm trying to. I want to see really old things. And I'm going to do some of the touristy stuff. I'm going to go see Buckingham Palace. I'm going to do all that. Uh, you have to. I'll see Big Ben. I won't be very excited about it, but I got to do it. But I want recommendations. Like, what should I see? I want to see old stuff. I want to see historical stuff. I've already got Stonehenge. I think I can make it there. Um, I want to. I want to go to Hadrian's Wall. Do you know what that is? Yeah. It's a. It's an old Roman Empire outpost that was in England. Because for a while, I think at the same time, English people, Romans, and Vikings were fighting over England. Maybe even French people, all at the same time, all these empires, like English kingdom, Vikings, Roman fucking empire, and then maybe French people as well were fighting over different parts of England and controlled different parts of England. When in your mind those things happened in vastly different time periods and different places in the world, mm. but that was all going on at once at one stage, which is just mind-blowing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to Warhammer World, of course. I have an entire day. I literally planned my tour around being able to go to Nottingham for one day with no show. <laughs> People are like, oh, you should do a show in Nottingham. No, I don't have time. I'm going to Warhammer World and I don't want to be worrying about a show. That's my Disneyland. You understand me? I want to see the fucking tank and I want to see the Space Marine. Cross my fingers and hope I bump into Henry Cavill. And then there was there was also like a a medieval armor and weapons museum that I want to go to as well that I can't remember the name of, um, because that'll be sick. I don't know. I just like I just realized. Oh man, I can see old things, and I've just gotten I'm hyper focusing. I want to see old shit. Unfortunately, I have to take a suitcase with me, which I really tried not to do, but I am doing that. I really wanted to get away with like a big backpack, but I've got to do the suitcase because I got my camera gear. But that's okay. Are you bringing your big camera? Yeah, I will. Yeah. I think. I don't know. I'm packing tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to bring. I've only got like 23 kilos and I'm there for a month. But it's summer, so I'm not going to need lots of warm clothes. Mm. I think I'll just bring like long johns and singlets. And then one big jacket, and that'll be enough for when it gets cold, I hope. Worst case, I'll buy something when I'm there if I really mess up. But I checked the temperature today. It's like 28 degrees in London. It's hotter. Yeah. So I think it'll be fine. But also I've only got 23 kilos, so I don't know how much all my camera gear and stuff weighs when I've got all my clothes in there. I don't, but not much. Don't know if you need to bring your big camera. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, anyway, probably an off-air conversation. Probably an off-air conversation. Guys, I think that's where we're going to finish the episode. Thank no, you very no. much for... we got to keep going. I went to a gig last night and I was so shitty. It was an acoustic gig. Yeah. It was in Carlton. It was mm. a small crowd. But during the set, no one shut the fuck up the entire time. Really? Everyone was talking. And they would do it. They were like... It was an album for an album launch. So they were talking in between the songs. Like, yes. They were like, oh, did you, did you, did you, did you? no one was shutting up. It, they didn't even listen to the artists when they were talking. Yeah. That's annoying. It was driving me fucking crazy. I was getting so pissed. I was like, so I just, were they bombing? No, they the were musicians. They were absolutely crushing. But people were talking. But people were having a yap. That sucks. Yeah. I guess treating an, an, an acoustic performance like it was uh, background music at a restaurant or something. Yeah, well that's, but you had to pay to be there. It wasn't like it was a gig in the 80s where it was free and you, yeah. it just happens to be there. It was driving me nuts. And yeah, that's, that's, I was just kind of thinking like you would never do that at a comedy show. Why is music different? You How would about never this? do it as a theatre show. Yeah, Why that, is music different? That does suck. Tell me about these... $69 steaks. Oh, dude. We go to a venue. And I won't say what venue it is, all right? <clears throat> and we get there and it's classic fucking regional Australia venues. Love when I see you guys there, but dealing with your venues is always the fucking worst because you email them, you call them, and everything sounds good, 
And then you get there and you find out that, you, that you're performing in a paddock and there's fucking chickens running around. It's fucked. Every fucking venue that I do in regional Australia, I have to construct a comedy club inside of. And there's some guy called Jimbo who, who has never seen electricity in his life. <laughs> and that's the sound tech. I'm like, hey, man, time to do sound tests. Huh? <laughs> Can't you just stand up and yell? No! We had this one place and tour manager Mitch is has been emailing me like, oh, we need, we need a sound system, we need speakers, we need a microphone. They're like, yes, we have all of those things. I get there and there's like a fucking wireless microphone that is only a microphone because it looks like one and it doesn't fucking work. Like, and then there's tech issues and the woman there was, bless her soul, lovely woman, but had no idea what the fuck she was doing and was not a sound tech. So she goes, I've, I had it all working before and then you got here and it's broken. I'm like, well, I don't know how this works because we're hiring it from you and you said that you would have this. And, and she didn't even own the place. She, she was like a person that did front of house. Like she was normally like serving beers and she's been tasked with this and she doesn't even know how it fucking works. I go... Oh, well, if the wireless thing doesn't work, do you have an XLR cable so we can plug my microphone in that I brought from home and then we'll just do a wired mic? And she said, what's an XLR cable? And I had to leave the venue and go for a walk <laughs> and then come back when I had calmed down because it wasn't her fault. <laughs> and, dude, it was – I ended up – I'm like, all right. I know a lot of this stuff. I'll be able to figure it out. And I Googled the model of the wireless microphone that they had at the venue. And it was like an $85 fucking, like you would never use. It cost $85 for the microphone and the wireless transmitter. Literally when I got a text, it went, di -di 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 -di. like, you know, when you were driving with your parents in the car and their phone rang and you listen to the radio and it would be like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> It fucking did that. I haven't heard that since I was eight years old. <laughs> the phone in my pocket was making, I was, I was going test, test, test. Someone sent me a text. Beep, 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 beep. And I'm like, I can't perform. Literally, I can't do the show. I'm looking at going, fuck, it's way too late to cancel. People are going to show up. And then what we end up doing is we work out that the stage is portable and I find an XLR cable in my bag because thank fuck I recorded a podcast with my good friend Justin Ryan like the day before. <laughs> so I just so happened to have an XLR cable and a microphone, but it wasn't long. It was a podcast one, right? So I ended up plugging it into the sound desk, which for some reason was behind the bar. And we moved the stage in front of the bar and as punishment, they couldn't sell drinks during my show. Oh, no. Which upset them. And I was like, well, we're doing that or I'm not, I can't do the show at all. Mm. Got to get out of this country, man. Tell me about the stakes. Oh, and then, <laughs> then they go, oh, because we haven't given you what you fucking paid for, which is a venue that works, have some stakes on the house. And we go, oh, this makes us feel a little bit better. <laughs> and for context, usually every regional venue, they look after you. They feed you, right? And there's no charge for that because we're bringing sometimes 200 people through their venue. They're making money off whatever, right? But in this case, we paid for something, didn't get it. And they were like, well, here's, here's have this. Just a couple days ago, Two weeks after the show, I got invoice for the stakes. What? $69. Each. What? Yes. Each? Each. They told us they'd be, they, they were apology stakes. Now I got to go back to the venue and be like, those stakes were an apology. I'm not paying $69 because you fucked up. I already paid you for a venue that didn't fucking work. $69 apology stakes. I wouldn't fucking pay for a $69 stake ever. 
I'm not a steak man like that. I'll only accept a good steak if, it, if it's packaged as a sorry. $69 sorry steaks. I do not accept that kind of apology. I'm sorry, can I have some 69 extra dollars? Absolutely not. I don't even care if it's the funny number. Ridiculous. <laughs> so now we have to have a back and forth over email. I'm like, oh, well, actually. And, and I know that someone else there is going to get in trouble for it because you know it would have been like the fucking venue manager or the bar owner that wasn't there that night that probably should have been because it was a fucking disaster going, oh, why'd you give away steaks? And then the poor person who, didn't, who made that decision was like, well, it's actually because you fucked me over and gave me and told me that we had a good sound system, but we have an $85 Chinese Amazon fucking bullshit broken ham radio wireless microphone that gets disrupted by texts. I haven't heard that since I was eight years old, man. Since my dad had a Nokia that he didn't know how to use. Anyway, you got to watch the women's diving. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. I've got one more thing. Okay. And then we'll wrap up. Have you seen that Marvel have announced the big new villain? Yeah. The big new villain, Doctor Doom, who, by the way, I'm not a big Marvel guy, but he's a fucking excellent character. Great villain. And they've always fucked him up. The Fantastic Four movies, both times they tried, they weren't very good. So they fucked him up twice. And they had to replace uh, Majors, who was going to play Kang, because... Uh, <laughs> did you know that do you know what he's doing now now that he lost the job i know what he did what is he doing now well now he's actually fighting in the women's division of boxing <laughs> did you see that they're all upset because apparently there's someone that's uh got too much testosterone <laughs> fighting in the women's olympics oh, that's know. jonathan majors <laughs> That's his new job because he got fired by Marvel. So he decided to put his talents to work at the Olympics and he really needs that $20,000. So he's just, he's just crushing it right now. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Doom gets pulled out at Comic-Con and they reveal that the person playing Dr. Doom is Robert Downey Jr., that sucks. He's a great actor. Fuck, that's so boring. Is that all they have now is remember this? That's all. Remember when Marvel movies were good? Yeah, they were good when you weren't making every film be remember when they were good. Bringing back Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom, I just think is so lame. Because, like, if you want to do evil Iron Man, that's a story that you could actually tell that could be fucking awesome. And that's a story that does exist in the comics that is, like, known as quite a good story to tell. By critics and by fans, there's a great evil Tony Stark mm. comic arc out there that you could adapt, but instead you're making him Doctor Doom... I don't know. I just think it's so, it's very lame and it's very, remember this? I don't understand it because he's going to be playing the same person in playing two characters. Is that? I don't, I don't know. know how they're going to do it, but like it could be a new universe. Uh, you know, it could be like a guy, like they're doing, because I think they, they got fucked up ever since um, Jonathan Majors joined the women's division of, of the Olympics to, for boxing. Um, and became like a, a world-class athlete known across the world as one of the best uh, boxers in the women's division. Ever since he stopped being an actor and became an Olympic boxer, um, they kind of had to pivot because he was going to be the big bad guy and he was they were setting up the multiverse and he was going to be the bad guy. Mm. Now they kind of have set up the multiverse thing but had to remove him because he quit acting to start boxing. 
uh, and, <laughs> and they need a new bad guy. So maybe they're going to go, oh, from another universe, these, this guy. But I don't know. I just think it's lame because, like, I'm just I'm just thinking about. I just had I just realized that all of the other characters that knew Tony Stark. Does this mean that they're gonna look at Doctor Doom and be like Tony, and then realize he's evil? Like that's gonna be lame. But also in the comics, Doctor Doom never ever ever takes his mask off. Like that's his character. He's never ever seen without the mask. So maybe it will just be Robert Downey Jr. and he won't take the mask off. So you, you and the characters will kind of forget that that's Iron Man. I don't know. I just think it's, it's, I'll tell you one thing. Robert Downey Jr.'s agent needs a big raise. <laughs> like how they pulled that shit off is fucking incredible. Whatever they had to do to get Robert Downey Jr. cast again in a universe where his character died. Fucking bravo. <laughs> Unbelievable work. Because I can't see a world where that is good for anyone other than Robert Downey Jr.'s bank account. That's some... Like, whoever his agent is, I want them to represent me. Like, oh, you know how I played the most popular character and was the most popular actor in your franchise and had, like, the most impactful death in your cinematic universe? Well, I would like to be cast again as someone else. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, I guess they're going to... they that, That's what they're going to have to do. Like, either... Like, all of these characters eventually will be recast unless they do a full, like what DC is doing right now, a full shutdown of the entire universe. Every storyline stops here and then new actors, new stories, everything. Eventually, at some point, you're going to need a new Thor. You'll, I mean, they've already got a new Captain America. They're already kind of doing that. It seems like they don't want to end the continuity. They're just continuing on. But the, I guess the problem that they have now is that they kind of made a... It's dozens of average as fuck movies and TV shows. So the continuity that they have is predicated on movies that no one cared about or saw. Mm. And it got too confusing. Like I checked out, like I reckon I checked out eight years ago, probably even longer. After Endgame, I just stopped caring. I couldn't care. Mm. That being said, the Deadpool movie, incredible. Amazing, hilarious, so funny, such a great comic book movie and an amazing comedy film. There was so much dialogue in it that was funny. And it wasn't, it wasn't like cringe. I don't know. It was just a good film. You should see Deadpool. Okay, we got to get out of here because I'm fading and rambling. All right, thank you for listening. We're, we're going to uh, continue on Patreon now. We've got some stuff planned for the Patreon. Uh, and... Uh, I'll see you in London, dude. Loosebees.com. Get your tickets. And uh, I'm going to be on <laughs> uh, F-Boy Island, August 5. Isn't that crazy how I'm doing tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow. Well, yep. when this one comes out. When this comes out, yep. Tune into F-Boy Island. All right. Thanks for watching. See you on Patreon. Have a shit one. Bye.